learn how to tell if you have scoliosis. So one common question I get from a lot of patients is, how do I know if somebody has scoliosis? What's the easiest way to determine you know, if a friend or a family member or cousin, brother has scoliosis, can I see it? Can I check them outside, look at their body, look at something and say, yes, this person has scoliosis or yes, for sure, this person doesn't. Well, the only real good way, obviously, is with an image of the spine because an image will always tell you what's happening. But if you don't have a way of doing an image and we're looking to see if a scoliosis is noticeable on the outside, it's not always as clear and concise because there's a lot of variables in terms of the, how big the curve is and the patient that can determine whether that's actually visible or not, okay? And what are some of these things that can possibly determine how you know, whether, whether it's noticeable or not. Well, first thing is going to be severity, right? Severe curves tend to be more noticeable on the outside, the size of curve, meaning how big it is. A big curve is very easy to notice. Typically, curves over 25 to 30 degrees are typically noticeable outwardly. However, this will depend on patient's uh, body type. A thinner, leaner patient, you're going to see it a lot easier, 25, 30 degree curvature, versus a patient that's a little bit bigger. A patient that's a little bit bigger, they may need to have a 40 degree curve for you to be able to notice it outwardly. Um, curve location, meaning where the curve is located. Uh, curves in the thoracic spine tend to be easier to notice because they affect the rib symmetry. And this rib symmetry tends to be very easily noticeable when a patient bends forward or bends, or you can see it easily. Lumbar curves are not as easily noticeable because they only tend to affect the symmetry of the waist. And sometimes that can be hidden easier with body type and even clothes, where rib symmetry is much more difficult to hide um, and it's tend to be more, 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 more noticeable. Patients age, meaning as patients are typically in their adolescent stage and they're growing rapidly, it tends to be very easy to find, easier to find. As patients get older and they become more mature and their body types change a little bit, it's harder to notice um, as patients get a little older until they start getting into late stage, meaning 55, 60 years plus, it tends to be noticeable there, again, easier. And of course, condition type, meaning the type of scoliosis. The type of scoliosis is typically very related to the severity of the scoliosis. So therefore, if somebody has like a congestion genital scoliosis that creates a, a severe, much more easier to notice than somebody has a slight adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. And that comes into what's the most common form. The most common form, unfortunately, is this idiopathic scoliosis in adolescent cases. This is 80% of all diagnosed cases. And unfortunately, when we look at idiopathic adolescent scoliosis, idiopathic meaning unknown cause, it really we really don't know what's causing it. We don't know how, the cur how big the curve is going to become, and we don't know how much it's going to progress over time. So therefore, small curves very often go undiagnosed because they're not visible. In fact, we believe many patients go undiagnosed because they never get a noticeable sign, meaning because most patients are getting their posture checked. Maybe they're getting checked at school with, by some school nurse or a physical education teeter, teacher. Maybe they're being checked by in their pediatric visits. And many go undiagnosed because the curves aren't big enough to be noticed. They stay less than 20, 25 degrees. They go into the adult stage. They slowly progress in the adult. The curve continues to worsen. It tends to cause maybe some back pain or they start knowing some asymmetrical waste happening, and then they go in in their 40s or 50s and get checked, even though they had scoliosis way younger as a child, but they never were noticed it, so they never got diagnosed with it. Severity, like I mentioned, is the easiest way or determining how much a curve is noticeable. There is, I like to say there is four very common sizes of curves. Mild curvatures are less than 25 degrees, less than 25 degree curves. And like I said, most of these curves are not noticeable in most patients unless they're very thin and it tends to be a thoracic curve and it's very easy to, it's more, it's easier to notice. Curves in the lumbar spine are not so easy to notice. And if the curve is perfectly symmetrical, meaning a very good S curve where it's 25 on top and 25 on bottom, they balance each other's out and it's hard to see uh, in that person's spine. Once we start getting into the moderate stage and we start looking at 25 to 45 degree curves, these curves tend to be more noticeable, especially if it's a one curve or a C-shaped curve, meaning a primary thoracic or a primary lumbar. We have one curve, we tend to be asymmetrical hips, you see asymmetrical waist, you see asymmetrical ribs. But again, if we get a very balanced curve, which is a 35 degree lumbar and a 35 degree thoracic, and they're very balanced, sometimes these curves can hide. 
and body types can hide these curves. Like if the patient's a little bit larger, a little bit bigger, has a little bit more body, they could, uh, could be a little harder to notice. A thin patient's much easier. Once we start getting into this 40, 45 degree range and we're in the severe category, almost all of these are very, very noticeable. You can notice it, but I can show you posture pictures and I can show you pictures of patients that have 50, 60 degree curves and they're very symmetrical, meaning 50 over 50, versus a 35 degree moderate scoliosis that's a C-shaped curve, and the 35 person visually looks worse, even though the curve is better. So that's why we always can't go by what we notice, but we know if we start seeing some of this stuff, scoliosis is more than likely present. And the last co uh, category I like to say is very severe. And for me, these are curves that are 80 degrees plus. And these curves are almost always noticeable no matter what the body type, no matter what where they are located, no matter what the symmetry. Because when you start getting in this range, there is uh, very noticeable postural differences and very noticeable issues that we're seeing in, in the person's body. The most common signs of scoliosis in kids is this postural change, what I notice. So if you notice children that have any type of posture asymmetry, like I mentioned, you want to be looking, uh, be concerned about scoliosis being there. In adults, it's not always posture. The most common thing that brings out a diagnosis of scoliosis in an adult patient is pain. And normally it's low back pain, and normally it's dull, achy, low back pain that worsens as the day goes, feels better when they wake up in the morning, and it can create difficult sleeping. That's the most common pain we tend to see in adult patients. And sometimes it can go into the legs, like I mentioned. Posture changes in kids, the most common thing is uneven shoulders. It can be uneven shoulder blades or uneven ribs. So you see one ribs going back, one ribs going forward. Most commonly when they bend forward, uneven waist, meaning there's one waist has more of a curvature, one waist is very flat. Uneven hips, meaning hips turned even a, a turn in the neck where the neck presents in an uneven position. Any type of unsymmetrical change that's consistent, I mean, a a in a asymmetrical postural change that's consistently over time, that you repeatedly can see the same problem over and over and over again, no matter how often you check this, your child's posture, could be a sign of scoliosis, even slight ones. Mostly, what I tend to notice is if there isn't a big rib arch, most patients go undiagnosed, meaning, uh, the pediatrician looks at the posture and doesn't see a rib problem because they bend them over really quickly, don't see any rib deformity, they send them on their way. But that will only catch a thoracic scoliosis. That won't catch a lumbar scoliosis, won't catch a very symmetrical scoliosis, won't catch an upper, server, an upper thoracic scoliosis leading into the neck. So therefore, you want to look at all the posture, shoulders, neck, ribs, waist, hips. Look at all of them, look at them standing from the front and from the back and bending forward, and that will give you the best idea or whether that somebody has a scoliosis that can be noticed through posture. So again, pain is the most common symptom in adults. Postural changes are the most common or most notable symptom in um, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, but there are no two cases the same. Could there be kids that actually have pain as the first diagnosis, the first symptom of scoliosis? 100%. Could there be adults that have no pain and get postural changes? 100%. So these two things can, can go back and forth. The most important thing, if you suspect it, get evaluated as soon as possible because we know scoliosis is progressive and no matter what stage you're in, and a bigger curve is harder to deal with than a smaller, especially in the conservative realm. So we recommend get evaluated soon. If you notice scoliosis, we also recommend you treat it as soon as possible in most cases to help deal with the progression and the continued uh, problems that scoliosis tends to create over people's lives. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.